All right, great question that came in that uh, really got me thinking. And it's a question that I've been asked over the years, uh, but also a question that has, my answer has evolved over time. And the question was uh, regarding my fame. Do I hate being famous? Do I love being famous? And do I hate taking selfies? <laughs> um, and again, my answer to this has evolved over time because I feel like, um, you know, fame, Fame can be a really tricky thing. Fame can be uh, great. Fame can be deceiving. Um, fame can also, if you let it, and if you get wrapped up in it, it could take you down long, dark roads that can be very detrimental and damaging to your career, to your life, uh, to relationships. And, um, you know, sometimes that is a dead end road if you kind of get wrapped up in it. So these days, um, and it's taken me years, by the way, to get here, is I try to be really, neutral on fame and um, I don't hate it. Um, I don't love it like I like, like, oh, I need to be famous. No, I'm usually, um, I'm grateful for it. But also, uh, again, I keep the, I keep the meter in neutral there because I like, I don't like to overreact to fame and I try to underreact to it. Again, because it could be really deceiving. And when I first started to become uh, well known as a pro wrestler, um, and being and being famous in the world of pro wrestling, at that time it actually kind of skewed my perception of what reality, what my reality was at that time, and really what the true reality was um, around the world. And um, the reason why I share this with you is because it was a, a, a lesson that I had learned years and years ago that has actually. Um, made me better, more evolved, and more aware about fame these days so I can appreciate it more. More importantly than appreciating the fame, I can appreciate um, I can appreciate the fans more and I can appreciate the customers, the consumers, the people more. So when I was a pro wrestler and when I first started to get a real taste of fame uh, was in around 1999, um, 90, 98, 99 when I became uh, WWE's youngest heavyweight champion. And at that time, you have to understand, the world of pro wrestling, there is nothing like the world of pro wrestling. It is a machine, an entity, unlike no other uh, in this world. And the passionate wrestling fans are like no other, which is why I still have a, 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 a deep connection uh, with them and a deep relationship with them, because I grew up in pro wrestling and I love it. Now, that, and again, I'm not speaking for any other pro wrestler, uh, but I know how it affected me. So the day goes like this, um, the day in the life of a pro wrestler, at least for me back then, and for all of us back then, uh, but, it, but I'll let you know how it affected me. So um, I would go to the airport um, and I would usually fly out of Miami International Airport or Fort Lauderdale. From there, I would then fly to whatever town I was wrestling in, any city uh, across the country. Land, I would go to the rental car, uh, pick up my rental car. From the rental car, I would go to the hotel. I would check in. From the hotel, I would check in, then I would go to the local restaurant, whatever city it was. After that, I would then go to the gym, work out. After that, then go to the arena. I would perform that night in the arena, uh, have a wrestling match, and then get in the car, drive to the restaurant again, if they're still open. I'd have something to eat. And then I'd drive a couple of hundred miles down the road to the next town. Now. From the, from the airport to the rental car to the hotel, to the gym, to the restaurant, to the arena. Everywhere we went, wrestling fans were always there. So, which was great. And they wanted autographs, they wanted pictures, they had memorabilia, they wanted me to sign these WWE belts, they had everything and anything. Now, what happens, this is where fame can be a little tricky and it can be deceptive and you gotta be careful about it that you don't get sucked into the vortex of it because it's created this reality for me back then. Now I'm 25, 26 years old. And um, the reality it created was, holy shit, I can't go anywhere. I'm so famous that, <laughs> that I can't go anywhere. Guys, I'm going to the, to, to, to the airport. I mean, I'm going to the Waffle House, fans are there. I'm going to the local gym, fans are there. Going to the arena, fans are there rental car dealership, fans are there. I mean, I don't know, I'm like the Beatles. Guys, listen, Beatles, Elvis, uh, Jesus, 
and I'm this famous now. <laughs> so you can see, now this happened every single day. And when this happens every single day, this is where you have to be careful that you kind of don't get sucked up in it like I did. And I used to think like, man, I am just, I, 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 don't, I don't know what, I mean, this is crazy. So again, Jesus level fame. When, I mean, when the truth is now looking back, the fame that I have today that I'm so blessed with and I'm a lucky son of a bitch to have, that fame back then pales in comparison to what I have today. Um, but the lesson was, um, so here's what happened. I was out having dinner one night and I was having dinner with my ex-wife and I saw fans getting excited at another table and I knew they were getting ready to come over. Nowadays, through time and experience, I could walk into a room, I could walk into a big space, it could be intimate, there could be 10,000 people, I can immediately assess, all right, the, they're gonna get emotional over there, this is getting ready to happen over there, this guy's got his camera phone already out, this guy's approaching, this woman's crying, like I, <laughs> I can really assess now, I've got my spider senses to a really good place. So back then, uh, I saw this couple getting ready to come over, they finally came over, they worked themselves up to come over to ask me for a picture. They come up and they were so nice. I'll never forget it because it became a, this moment became my teachable moment and a great lesson that I took with me for life. And I'm so grateful it happened. Uh, and I thank this couple, by the way, that they probably had no idea that they were part of a defining moment in my life. So they came over and they were so, they were so nice. They said, I'm so sorry, we're so sorry. Can we please have your autograph and a picture? So sorry. And of course I said yes, but how I said yes was a psychological play, like I was playing chess, because I said yes, but in a way that made them feel bad. So I said, sure, yeah, 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 absolutely, come on, sit down. And in that moment, their demeanor changed, their energy changed. They went from excited and sorry, but really excited to then they felt bad. And 